could you just talk about the sort of the impact he's made on and off the pitch compared to what you were expecting when you when you bought him? Yeah, we were expecting the best, obviously, because we have to pay big money and, and we knew the player really well. But uh, something else is the way he's fitting, you know, and and uh, how loved and respected he's already at the club, um, in the team. And then, obviously, the performance that he's put in every single week has been probably one of the most consistent players, again, in, in this season and, and especially in big, big games. He's been uh, incredibly is strong for us to help us to, to win those games. So we are delighted to have him. For the last sort of two or three years, every other week, David Moyes was asked how much is he worth? You yeah. obviously spent 105. Could you put a price on where he's at now? No, that's not for me to do. That's not for me to do. A lot more? Sorry? A lot more? I don't know. When we talk about that figures, uh, I get lost. Okay, it's Andrew Mo. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Um, this season you've beaten the likes of Liverpool, City in the league, but West Ham um, have beaten your side twice, obviously first time in the Cup and then the second time in the league. What is it about a David Moyes West Ham side that is so difficult to uh, break down on the pitch? <laughs> That's exactly that. That is very difficult to break down when they go ahead as well in the scoreline. Um, it gets even more difficult. Uh, we generated so much as well. Um, especially at home, but we cannot capitalize on that. And and he's got his talent as well. His teams always have that talent that when you leave the window open a little bit, they are ready to take any advantage from it. And uh, and that's again going to have to play on Sunday again. In the past, it's been reported of your admiration for Calvin Phillips. He's obviously a very good midfield player. He's obviously going to be up against your sides this weekend. What kind of threat does he pose in the course of West Ham? Yes, obviously, he, he made his name uh, playing at Leeds and, and the way he did and uh, and the performance, the consistency that he showed in that team and uh, and they had a big move and um, and now everybody suspect because at the national team level as well, he's done uh, some important things as well, so he's a big talent. Jorginho, of course, last game received many plaudits. If you recall earlier in the season after the Spurs game, he was getting a lot of criticism for one of the mistakes he made in that game. What does it show about his mental fortitude that he's gone from being questioned from hmm. that point to now obviously coming out to be one of the best players of that game? Well, that's Jorginho. His biggest strength is his personality as his mentality. That even if he makes a mistake, the next time he's not going to hide. And if you want to be a top team and, and be a midfielder that wants to command uh, the team, you need to be able to do that and, and he does it. And in light of all this talk of sim bins and blue cards, do you think that in terms of innovation in football, what, what's your general... Mindset on innovation. I don't want to give any more ideas. I think we have enough ideas and enough people, so I prefer not to say anything else. Okay, we'll go to the last couple. Simon from the standard. Okay, well, just on um, when you have a result like last week against Liverpool, how do you sort of get people back down to earth and reset to go again the week after when you've had such a high like that? Talking about uh, West Ham the next day and, um, and the things that we're going to still improve that we didn't do that well against um, Liverpool and the room for improvement that the team has in, in many areas and uh, and that's it like we always do. Just on deck, but there's been so many players who have sort of been burdened <coughs> by big price tags in football in the past. What is it about his personality that he seems absolutely unfazed by? And when you met him and you were going to this, did you look at him and think, this guy can handle the pressure that's going to come to him? Yes, he's a very mature and confident person, especially for his age. But uh, he's done a lot in the game as well, you know, and um, and he's done he's done it in an academy and through an education that, in my opinion, is one of the best in the country. Um, he's got an environment, a family that very supportive, but as well very demanding of him, and he's gonna he's has dealt with that in in a great way. And then he loves what he does. You know, and he loves it every single day. He's very demanding with himself and he wants to get better. And then, yeah, he's got the qualities that God gave him and, and he keeps developing every day and uh, we have to support him on that. I don't think he's done it yet, but from the outside looking in, he seems like someone who's in that sort of leadership group. Does he feel like some of you could captain the team if you need to? You could put that responsibility on Yeah, he's got every skill. Obviously, he's been captain at uh, youth level. He's been captain of, for West Ham and, uh, and he's, he's one that... Sometimes you don't need to have the armband. When you talk, people listen and pay attention to that or not, and he's got this natural ability to do that. I finally we'll go back to Hall. Hi again, uh, Michael. Um, just on Tommy Asio, I was wondering, we've <coughs> spoken quite a bit before about what you like about him as a footballer, but as a person, um, from 
our perspective, he seems quite quiet, but um, what is he like to... You just want to hug him. <laughs> you just want to hug him all day and be next to him. He's always smiling. It's always positive, you know, it's, the way he looks after people and how humble he is. It's just adorable. Do you remember what your first impression of him was like when he first came to the club? Yeah, his presence. Um, and physically, you know, he looked much bigger than on TV because when we signed in, I didn't have the chance to meet with him in person. So that was a, a good first impression. And then that uh, he's got this positive energy about him. He's always smiling and and his eyes, he tells you that that it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's transparent, it's, it's clear and it's honest. That's it. When we've spoken about stuff you liked about him, you mentioned his football and education. Mm. And he did spend some time at Barcelona Academy when he was in Japan. I was wondering... Did you know that? And did you see, I guess, principles that you were taught um, in him when he came? No, yes, I, I knew that. But as well, I meant education at every level and, and the culture uh, that they grow in. That uh, when you talk about habits and about uh, trying to predict someone's future, is about, okay, how these people, this person behaves daily. That is going to make his future. And when you see Tomeyasu every single day, how he wakes up, looks after his job, looks after his people. But um, I think something good is going to happen for this guy. And this one on um, Gabriel, I think it's uh, going to be his 150th yeah. in Barcelona. Um, in terms of his influence growing, he's been really consistent over the past, I'd say, year. Yeah. Um, how has his influence grown? Uh, both on and off the pitch? Well, yeah, obviously a lot of things have happened to him. Um, obviously his role in the team has grown. Um, his personal life as well, he's got a very different personal life than he had before uh, with his family and his language. Um, and I think now as well, I think he changed a lot of things in his life and, uh, and he improved his mentality and, and he can decide what he wants to be. And I think he made the right call to take the direction that he took. Was that stuff he did on his own or that you asked him? To do? Uh, a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.